Hollow ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher. Now, I know what you're thinking. God, stream footage, he's become that guy. No, I haven't. I really haven't. I absolutely detest using stream footage for YouTube videos. I really dislike it. But this run that we got was so perfect, it would be a crime not to use it, honestly. And I didn't fraps it, unfortunately. So, yeah, bear that in mind. It is stream footage. I'm really, really sorry. But this run is just ideal for what we're trying to achieve with this series. So, this is part three of a series of tanking videos from basically zero to hero that we're doing. Where we are entering, for the first time, mythics. Mythic dungeons. And this is going to be a really important step in your development of becoming a tank. There's a number of things that we're trying to tackle with this video series. One of those is encouraging people who have never tried it and been a bit on the fence or wary of trying it or are afraid of it because of the responsibilities that it can hold to give it a go and give you the lessons and the knowledge you should need for all classes. Remember, this isn't about being a blood DK or a brewmaster and putting them into an attitude, a tanking attitude. And this is going to help you, even if you're not a main tank, if you are a main DPSer, it is vital that you understand what's going on on the other side of the coin. That will make you a better player. It really, really will. If you understand what the other roles are doing, what are the melee doing if you're ranged? What are the healers doing? What are they coping with? What are the tanks coping with? That's going to allow you to make better decisions and become a better player overall. And you might not even notice it straight away, but trust me, once you understand what the guys are doing and why they're doing it, you can start communicating and making good decisions. The second big thing that we're tackling in this series are the guys out there, and I know you're watching, are the guys who make excuses a lot for why they can't do things. The biggest and obvious thing is going to be item level, yeah? Item level is supposed to be like, well, what's the item level for doing this? What's the item level for doing that? It's a really crazy question once you actually understand the real fabric of what makes the game work when you get into deep pve is asking those questions doesn't really pay off in any way it's a real excuse kind of question and looking for ways out it's my class it's my spec it's all these things that mean i can't do x yeah i can't do this because of blah 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 and therefore they get stuck in this nightmare situation that you might be in right now where you don't feel like you're getting anywhere and hopefully we can provide some encouragement in order for you to get involved in this stuff. So why was this run so perfect? We are on an 841, I believe, at the time, DK, Blood DK. And the whole purpose, again, trying to avoid people finding excuses as to why I did this, is that we are entirely geared through world quests, yeah? We're entirely geared through that stuff. We haven't used friends in any way, shape, or form. We have done everything with this Blood DK on stream. Yeah, besides a couple of world quest caches, we have no legendaries or anything like that. And he's as bare to the bone as you can possibly be for a player who has no helping hands. So we didn't use guildies. We didn't use people from the stream. We didn't do any of that. We have a fresh to get character. We didn't go to the auction house and buy stuff. This is a guy who is literally capped, done some world quests, and now we're moving up to mythic, right? We're moving into mythic dungeons. So mythic dungeons are going to be a massive step up for a number of reasons. Mobs aren't going to melt. If you get the right group. The, the difference between heroic and mythic is pretty significant in terms of your tanking. In the heroic, so you might think, oh, I can get away with doing the daily heroic. That's fine. But what you'll often find in a daily heroic is one or two very overgeared players, particularly at this point in the game with the gear inflation that's going on in Legion, and they're likely to crush the dungeon. You might get a guy like me or my mage doing the daily heroic who's going to be pulling a million DPS on bosses, several hundred thousand on trash, and just melting things away to the point is... The mobs aren't living long enough to potentially kill you in the first place. So it doesn't matter if you have a terrible healer. You might even get a raid healer in there who's DPSing for all you care. And he puts a hot on you and that does it for everything, right? So heroics are a really bad way of dealing with learning how to tank. It's a very bad way to do that. And we're going to talk about LFR at the end of this video as well. In Mythic, particularly at Mythic Zero, because raiders don't really go to Mythic Zero. Right? They'll go to Heroics because they get a quick AP and they can melt the dungeon. But they're generally not going to go into Mythic 0, Mythic 1, whatever you want to call it. They're going to do Daily Heroic and then they're going to jump right up to like Mythic 7 Plus. Right? And usually at this point in the game, I'd, I mean, my mage doesn't do anything really below 11. And that's just the appropriate level for my mage. That's not egotistical or showing off or anything. That's just the appropriate level for where my mage needs to be to get his appropriate weekly cachet is to be like my key resets. I do 11, I do 12, and then I kind of done for the week. So you have this gap in the middle where there's this group of players who are either raiders who are boosting, therefore you're not going to learn anything. They probably have their own tank. And the rest of the people are the guys who are supposed to be there. 
And that's really important. They're supposed to be there. So what we did is we took our, our, uh, our tank, our Blood DK, and we went to the pre-made group finder. <laughs> and we looked for people who were doing Mythic Zero. And we just passed, we just said sign up. So I was declined from the first one, probably due to item level or, or nothing else. They wanted an overgeared tank. But what we found on the second one, which we tried to avoid because it was Halls of Valor, which nobody likes, was a group of guys who I'm going to put out some possible suggestions. I have no idea. No, no communication was needed in Mythic 1. Are a group of, I would say, casual players who had the raid quest that involves going to clear Mythic Halls of Valor. That's what I'm guessing they were doing based on the group setup because they invited me straight away and they summoned me they'd been stood there so it looks like they've been waiting for a tank for a while they were all undergeared and what we found out which is why this was a perfect run is they were all not great players for whatever reason either they are new players they're alts it doesn't matter it's irrelevant why we're not mocking them for that reason what we're saying is this was perfect so we had things like a holy paladin who didn't use beacon of light which the Holy Paladin's listening will be like, what? Yeah, he didn't use Beacon of Light. He was just didn't refresh it. I think he put it on at the beginning of the dungeon. There was three wipes total through this run, I believe, and never used it again. <laughs> and healing in general was pretty weak. And the DPSs were all about 100k, if not less, DPSs. I was the top DPS for the majority of the dungeon. Ideal. Absolutely ideal for what we're trying to deal with here. This is a run, and we had a lot of viewers watching this happen on stream who were like, I would never, ever do this dungeon. And if you're a raider, particularly if you're a raider and you've lived in that raid bubble for a long time, people were mind blown. Like, this is going on in game. And it's like, yeah, this is where people start out. This is the important thing. This is where people start out and where you, as the tank, can actually get success where others wouldn't even try. And that's going to make you the difference. That's going to make the difference between you and everybody else is you're going to be able to use the knowledge in order to do well. So... <laughs> What we do in Mythic, what we do with Mythic, and the main thing we're going to take away from this early section in the video, is that this is where we're going to put everything we learned in video 1 and 2 into real practice, right? All the things we learned about positioning and looking for warning signs. You remember the second part of this video where I knew I was going to kill somebody by doing one action. The signs that we had in the first couple of packs led us to making huge decisions throughout the dungeon about how this dungeon is going to go. Not only that, Mythic and Early Mythic, particularly in Pugs, I cannot stress this enough, some of the worst tanks I find who seemingly get into guilds and then fail are because they learned to tank with friends. They learned to tank with friends. If your friends are good, or if your friends are bad, you don't benefit a lot from playing with them when you're learning to do stuff. Now, let, let me expand on this. Friends are more willing to forgive your faults or not mention it at all. Pugs won't do that. Not only that, people you're not communicating with and you don't know very well, like you'll find in a pug, they will do the craziest shit ever. And in Mythic, even Mythic 1, that's going to be very noticeable from the very, very, very beginning very very noticeable from the super get-go is they're going to do things that you have no idea people would do and they're going to suggest crazy things like you can skip a lot of the trash in the middle of halls of valor i've never seen it done and i've done mythic a lot of times but our demon hunter was convinced you could do that and blamed me for pulling the trash there um they pulled the trash all the way back to the beginning of the dungeon <laughs> which i was so surprised by when we did have our first wipe in there the next two wipes were on odin we didn't wipe after that because i learned a lesson there it's like okay these guys can't really handle this stuff i ended up running out of cooldowns dps wasn't high enough to deal with it and I adjusted my strategy appropriately. So when we had the first wipe, I'm going to move us up to this first wipe. What we had happen is it was too much trash at the top of the stairs. I ran out of cooldowns. The mobs were healing too much. And ultimately, they I died. So as I released instantly, because we didn't have a combat res, and started making my way back, what do I see is the groups run all the way back to the beginning of the dungeon and brought all the mobs with them and then proceed to go into like a five or six minute long fight of bringing them down but we did we did it we brought them down and that's the kind of thing you're probably not going to deal with with friends who say just wipe it and reset right most most guys in of, of any raid strategy will know it's faster to just everybody die and just reset the fucking mobs and we'll do it again uh but you're not going to find situations like that and you're going to have to deal with it that's going to make you a better player because you're going to have to correct a situation that you don't ordinarily deal with when you think about playing with friends you don't generally have a really specific strategy of how you do near enough every trash pack I know for a fact, 
exactly what my tank is going to pull where and when to the point where I can freely cast while he's running into a certain area because I know what's about to happen. And you'll often find that with friends, that's not helpful because you're basically running a treadmill. You're basically doing Mario World 1-1 one, uh, one, one over and over and over and over again because you know exactly what's going to happen and you're just very, very good at that level. That doesn't make you particularly great at Mario. Right? It doesn't make you particularly great at Mario. It makes you really good at 1-1. And that's about it. It really limits your play space. So all these signs led me to adjust the dungeon. So after that happened and we knew there's too much trash, you'll notice that when we got to the top of the stairs, I pulled stuff way, way back. Way, way back. Because there was ninja pulls from places I had no idea people could ninja from. Uh, I'm going to skip us again uh, forward here to the dog boss and the trash before it. So I know from experience that the dogs before the dog boss, Fenrir... Uh, are particularly dangerous to tanks. I know that. And I know I'm not exactly overgeared to just sort of face tank it and be like, lul, 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 it's going to die. So I did a pretty sensible pull. What then proceeded to happen is our hunter pulled stuff from I, miles away. Crazy miles away. This is good, right? And you can either be the guy who rages at this and start spamming in the chat, like, you know, how the fuck did you pull it, you fucking idiot? Or you can say, this is why the fuck I'm here. This is why I'm here. Because there is no way in hell I would expect this to happen. How am I going to deal with it? You might die. <laughs> you might die. But you're going to be aware that, okay, I need to adjust because this guy doesn't know how to use barrage. Worse than I could have expected. You see a hunter who's maybe not doing particularly well. You go, okay, the barrages might be a bit wonky, right? Increasing your knowledge. I have to be aware of that. Oh, shit. It's really wonky. Right? Oh, is this, oh somebody else pulled. You're trying to pay attention to all these things at once. And <laughs> these are all the things you now need to be ready for. This is going to make you a better player. Absolutely make you a better player. I encourage every single one of you who's tanking to get involved in this area of playing. And you'll become so much better, so much quicker than you can imagine. Overall, this dungeon took us an hour. That's not that bad for Halls of Valor. It's really not. If you're in the world where pugging is what you do and you're learning an hour ain't too bad to pick up the knowledge you'll probably pick up in a worse than the worst environment the only way this dungeon could have been worse realistically is if we literally couldn't kill the first boss and people died and that etc 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 what actually happened is we persevered a little bit and i adjusted the play style of the dungeon and the pace of the dungeon and made sure the pulls were safe and did all those kind of things, which meant we didn't wipe again. We had safe pulls all the way through. And eventually we one-shot everything all the way up to Odin, where we had a couple of wipes because DPS was really, really low. Not much we could do about that at all. This is where you want to learn. It really is where you want to learn. And I hope you understand why it's where you want to learn, because unpredictability is how you become a good tank. Knowing the route all the way through is Mario 1-1, one, one, that's not going to get you any better. It's just going to make you better at this one particular scenario, and you're not going to pick up the vital skills needed to adjust to. I always a, a simple example would be, I always have my AoE ability ready for when we pull the next pack, right? So in my case, it would be Blood Boil, or it'd be Keg Smash, or it'd be Thunderclap, or it'd be whatever you want it to be in order to pull the next trash, because you know exactly when you're going to do it. When unpredictable things happen, that spell might be on cooldown. How are you going to deal with that? You have to deal with that. That's your job. You've got to deal with this situation that you had no idea was going to happen. And now you're going to deal with it. And now you're going to figure it out. And you might make mistakes. You probably will make mistakes. But those mistakes will make you better because you should be learning from them. Which is really cool. Uh, what we're going to do now is move on to a question I get asked a lot. Because we're, we're almost at the stage now where we're kind of going to run our course on this on this dk itself the next thing i want to do is some reasonably high mythic pluses we did do a mythic 2 after this but an 870 demon hunter snuck in there so it's pretty useless to show you that um but we want to do some reasonably high mythic pluses on this dk and then we're going to probably try and do a raid as well and at that point we're kind of we're kind of done with this project in terms of the fact that we'll probably be too geared to really make any substantial points we'll just be getting on with the game at that point which is where i want you guys to be it's like well i've kind of i'm learning now and i'm done so i can move on LFR. <sighs> Not a lot of people realize just how bad for you, particularly for tanks, LFR is. Now, I am not bashing LFR. I'm not. I want you to be absolutely clear on this. I like LFR for what it is. I think it's great for guys who don't raid, who want to see inside a raid dungeon and raid with a lot of people and see what that's like and get some loots out of it, maybe get a legendary, etc, etc. I think LFR serves the purpose. Most of the people complaining about LFR have no business being in there or are deserving to be in there for whatever reason and expect something different. 
It's designed for people who can't raid. That's the purpose of LFR, and that purpose is fulfilled in LFR, in my opinion. In terms of making you a better player, though, there isn't much worse you can do if you're a tank. DPSs can get away with going to LFR and practicing some stuff, because bosses will live long enough for you to understand how you should manage things. Just like I said in Heroics, things die too quickly for you to really tank them in terms of mitigation. Mythic is good for that. LFR, not so much. LFR is designed to be one tanked. Right, because you don't know, Blizzard doesn't know what that other tank's going to be doing. Not only that, LFR is terrible for learning how to tank and even for learning raid mechanics because they don't do anything to you. This is something you need to bear in mind is LFR is designed to be successful. And I know some of you will say, well, what about TOV? I, my first LFR TOV on my Blood DK, I solo tanked the whole thing besides Odin. I solo tanked Guam and I solo tanked Hellier because I don't know what the other fucking tank was doing. The first one DC'd as soon as we pulled Guam and the next tank we got at Hellier just didn't know what was going on and just sort of DPS. He never taunted anything. He never did a damn thing. So I ended up soloing it. And that was on my uh, probably about 843 DK at the time. LFR has no mechanics that really worry you, and people do the craziest shit. So I jumped into LFR just before recording this video, just to get a little clip to go along with this commentary, and exactly what I wanted to happen happened. I've been really lucky with getting footage that I want to demonstrate my points recently. So what you'll see is I, I jumped into Xavius. The group was full, so I knew there was another tank in there. Uh, proceeded to pull the trash. Never saw him tank anything. So I was like, oh, maybe he's AFK. Maybe he's not very good. Maybe he's slacking. Maybe he's actually gone DPS because it can be solo tank, just like the healers tend to do. And the only, this place only needs three healers. And I assume they're great. So I'm going to go DPS because I'm awesome, right? You know those guys. <laughs> um, until we got to the very third trash wave after pretty much everything was dead, I noticed that my raid chat started to light up and the tank had one of those add-ons that sort of spams the chat every time he presses a button. Now... I was then aware we have another tank. Okay, this is going to be interesting on Xavius. Xavius can be solo tanked very, very easily. Uh, let's see what happens here. Let's be interested. So I started the ready check so we could do a reasonably decent pull on Xavius. I think that's always polite uh, for anybody who's there who's a good DPS. So we'll get a much better pull from that. It's going to have an overall smoother experience. It also introduces people to the idea of pull timers and trying to do things with that. And then I noticed the boss activated and the pull timer was... Totally ignored by the guy running up and pulling the boss. Okay, no problem. Remember, the big part of learning to tank is not getting stressed out. <laughs> you have to be very, very chill at people's mistakes because you're there to learn from those mistakes. That's why you're there. Remember your purpose for being there. So I was like, okay. And then what you're going to see is something that's very, very common in LFR with tanks is spam taunting. And therefore, your inability, if you know what's going on, to even deal with the fight in any logical sense. And all you're going to pick up there is really, really, really bad habits. So what you're going to see is, uh, if I put a little highlight on the text there, is the guy just, like, tanking, has aggro, and just spamming taunt while he's doing it. Uh, eventually, the, the had a healer who was spam dispelling him, who obviously got mind-controlled uh, for doing that. So I noticed his stacks got a bit high, so I was like, okay, I'm going to taunt it at this point because I haven't done anything yet. And I noticed he was still pressing things like bark skin and, and shield wall, survival instincts, all these kind of things, spamming his defensive. So I don't think he realized he wasn't tanking anymore and then started taunting again. Now, I'm not blaming the guy. I'm not blaming the guy because that's LFR is designed for shit like that to go on. We can laugh. We can laugh. Sure, go ahead. I mean, this channel is mostly around raiders. There's a lot of raiders who watch this stuff, right? We can laugh, but ultimately, this is what LFR is designed for. It's designed for players to make tons and tons of errors and still have a modicum of success because it's... Is it, does it hurt anybody? No, it doesn't. So we shouldn't be getting annoyed by it. But you, as, as somebody who hopefully is watching this who wants to learn to be a good tank, the point is LFR is the absolute worst place to do that. The absolute worst place to do that. On the ass end of that i do want to say this so your best places to learn absolutely to learn to do do things well and react properly for me is early mythics with pugs yeah if you're not willing to do that or you want to try and get a little better with your tank the next best place to really learn tanking really learn tanking is really high mythics really high so i'm talking 10 plus that's uh where and in particular dealing with the different debuffs 
dealing with abilities that mobs do that you don't even notice until you get to like 11 and 12 where there's a mob that oh shit that mob does something <laughs> i didn't know that mob does something but now that fucking ability one shots me and then you learn that is a good place to do it as well if you're already a raid tank and looking to improve uh, hopefully you if you are a raid tank you're doing your 10s and 11s and moving up to that but i encourage you to do so because that's where you're going to learn various things the worst places to learn are heroic Heroic's great for me setting examples of your positioning and stuff like that, but in terms of you actually becoming good at the other end of this video, the guy sat behind the keyboard who's listening to this, not so much. And LFR is the worst. So what about normal heroic and mythic raiding? Uh, the thing you're going to learn there is how you specifically deal with the mechanics of the fight, and then you're going to re repeat that ad hominem. That's not a great place to become a good tank in any and all situations, which is what you want to be. You want to be the guys like, we need a tank for this, who do we call? Because it doesn't matter what this boss does. It doesn't matter what this summonable mob, 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 mob does that we don't even know what it does. Because our guy's got a ton of experience in totally different scenarios and be able to pick it up quickly. Quick habits, learn to do it. He's not a guy who can just tank raid bosses and knows how to deal with those specific mechanics over and over and over and over again. So I would really like to leave a message to guys who maybe rolled a tank, played with their friends and is now doing some raid tanking. Maybe you want to check out doing some Pug World. Encourage you to do it. Report back to me on that one. Because I think you might find you'll pick up some good hints and tips when you're not just playing with your friends. And for you guys as well who are just getting into this. And I know there's many of you because you've been getting in contact with me. Is get in there. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jump in. Have some fun with it. Of course we had a giggle at these guys. Of course we had a giggle. But it's all in good faith. There's like no hard feelings here whatsoever. Alright guys. So if you want to see the full VOD of the Halls of Valor run then uh, you can, I'll link it down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.